In this video, I'm going to show you exactly what my small church, 75 to 100 people, uses as a sound and lighting setup. I want to make it very clear, I am not trying to convince you to buy all of these things. In fact, in many cases, I think there's a lot better options out there that you could use nowadays. But what I want to show you is a realistic setup. Because so often I watch videos and read blog posts about people's budget setups and they're like, yeah, it only costs $10,000 to $15,000. And I don't know about you, but that's not very budget friendly for my small church. We definitely don't have $15,000 to spend right now on tech stuff. It would be great if we did, but we don't. So I want to show you the gear that we have, but also more of the philosophy behind using the gear that we have. Now there's only one problem. We're at my house right now, so we need to head over to church. So let's head over. Welcome to Merge Community Church. This is where I lead worship every single Sunday, and I'm going to show you all of the sound and lighting stuff that we use. So, here it is. I want to start off by showing you the sound room slash sound booth, which is right around the corner here, and then I'll take you up on stage and show you everything that we have up there. So, let's head to the sound room. By the way, this is our welcome center lobby area. We're set up for a small group session tonight. I'm going to take you up to the stage in just a minute but immediately as you walk in to the right there is the sound room let's take a look inside and by the way when i went to show you this i actually was going to film this video yesterday i walked in and found this here's a little flashback from yesterday behind this door what do we find well to my surprise today we found some leaks the blessings of being in a small church. I'm gonna clean that up. I'll show you what it actually looks like here in a second. So needless to say, I was gonna film this yesterday, found the leak, didn't get back to filming it after I cleaned it up. So here I am, different shirt, same Spencer. Now it is time to show you what's in here. So let's take a little tour around and I'll just kind of point things out as I see them. The first thing to show you is not the stapler, but our wireless mic. This is our wireless lav that our, well, I guess it's a headset, not a lav, that our pastor uses whenever he preaches. This is a Shure, and I'll show you the actual wireless unit. The Shure BLX4R, right there. Pretty, I, I'm happy with the performance of the wireless pack seems like it does the job. We actually have to upgrade it here in a second because of those frequency changes that you're not allowed to have wireless mics on certain frequencies. This is one of those, so honestly, probably just buy the same thing because I really like it. It's like a good, cheaper, lower end, not super cheap. I don't think you want to buy super cheap for wireless microphones, but lower end wireless microphone. I'd recommend that piece of gear. I'm going to be sharing what I recommend and what I don't recommend because I don't recommend everything that we have. So that's the wireless mic from there. Let's head over to the soundboard. This is a Yamaha MG206C. And so it's got, what, 20 some channels, which is good enough for us. We run that. We've got a snake connected, which I'll show you up on stage once, once we get here, but these are all inputs from the snake. We've got pretty much at this point all of these inputs used up, which is going to bring me to my next point. Why don't I go sit down and just kind of talk to you about our mixing setup? or soundboard setup. So we moved into this building about six years ago now, and before that we were at another space, and really we took a lot of the equipment that we had in this other much smaller space, we took it and we tried to use it over here because once again we're a small church, low to no budget, and we need to use what we have. So we took our gear that we used in the other space and brought it here. Now, that was six years ago. We had the gear probably for two years 
before that, and the unfortunate part about it was that this was pretty much right before digital gear became super affordable. This was like literally we bought this the majority of this gear maybe six months before the Behringer X32 was announced, which is kind of marks for me at least the moment when digital gear started to becoming become really affordable. So we went analog and we still use analog today. When we upgrade, we will buy a digital board. But for now, we're using what we have and we've got that analog board. All right, back to the sound booth to show you the rest of the gear. There's really not like a ton of stuff to show you back here sound-wise. Most of it is up on stage because we try to keep things super simple. There's not really that much stuff up on stage either. But here is our power amp. This powers our main speakers, which are at the front of the room. This is a QSC GX5. With that being said, I do not recommend this. This is We bought this a couple times because you're going to see that we have a few more up on stage to power our monitors up there. And the thing is, with this power amp, the switch always goes bad. Maybe I can show you because the switches are actually bad up on stage right now. So I do not recommend this, but it's what we have. So it's what we use. Now let's talk about lighting for a moment. You can see we've got some lights up there. It's really not an exorbitant amount. We just have enough to light up the stage. And then we have a couple like background lights up there and a light on the cross. It's nothing crazy. I'll show you the fixtures once we get up there, but I want to show you how we control it. Like I said, we keep it really simple. And here is the lighting controller that we have. We have the Chauvet. Obey 10 and all we're using this for is these two sliders first so move them down move them up it brings the stage lights down brings the stage lights up super simple and then we also have these buttons here programmed to some different colors we don't really use them that often I basically leave them on that one setting I don't okay there I do have a few others programmed that we had like for VBS and stuff but it suits our needs. It was pretty cheap, I forget how much it is. If I didn't mention it already in this video, even though I'm not necessarily recommending all this gear, if you wanna check any of it out, all the links will be in the description below to what I can find because some of it, like I said, we got almost eight years ago now and some of it's discontinued, but we use what we have. That's gonna be a common saying here. So that's it for sound and lighting. I guess I'll show you just our main computer here. This is a, I think it's a 2016 Mac. Whoops. Let's go about this Mac and see the specs on it because I cannot remember off the top of my head. And we're using just Keynote. We aren't using Pro Presenter. I'd love to have Pro Presenter today at some point, I should say, but we use what we have. All right, where'd this pop up? Here are the specs on our Mac. We got, what, 3.2 gigahertz, i5, 8 gigs of RAM. And like I said, this is the 2016. So we got this refurbished. I think we got this when we moved into this building. So we've had it for six years now. Does that make sense? I don't know. Maybe it's not a 2016. Maybe we've only had it for three years. I think we used a laptop before that. But... It does the job, we aren't doing anything crazy, we're just throwing up slides, maybe some videos throughout the service, but we can trigger all of that in Keynote. So that's it for the tech booth back here. I'll take you up on stage and show you everything else we got. Welcome to the stage. This is where I spend pretty much every Sunday morning. This is my view right here, bright lights in my eyes. I can see the whole church my favorite view pretty much ever and i want to show you now everything that we use on stage so let's start with the microphones i actually don't have everything set up right now because we've got some team members away this weekend but a lot of it's redundant so i'll talk you through it for microphones we use the standard sm 58 there's actually a cobweb here a spider web all right we use the sm 58 we've got one there and then whenever I'm singing, I'm actually preaching this week, but whenever I'm singing, I stand right here, use another one there, and then we have one back here, 
where it kind of lives. And we have a third female vocalist who uses one as well. So SM58's there. We've got one more back here for anybody else who comes up on stage during the service to speak. And then as far as mics go, we've also got our cajon mic. So we're really more of an acoustic band. We've got our instrumentation is two acoustic guitars, one bass, one cajon, hopefully you can see that, and then three singers. That's our instrumentation. That's what we need inputs for and what we need microphones for. So we've got a cajon pretty much every Sunday. And we've got three microphones on it for now. This cajon is a little interesting. This is a minor, I think it's called a minor subwoofer. And what that means is that most cajones will have the sound hole in the back, but there's no sound hole in the back. There's just a handle, not a sound hole. These sound holes are in the front. So it's a little bit more challenging to mic this is how we're doing it right now, once again, using what we have. We have an SM58 just basically buried in the subwoofer part where all the air comes out of, so we get that bass tone from there. Then we're using this Shure 849 Focus. 849 pencil condenser mic. That sort of serves as the snare mic, but it also picks up some of the resonance of the cajon as well and then we just have this cheap audio technica m4000 s which our cajon player uses to mic he's got like a foot tambourine and a shaker occasionally so three microphones on the cajon let's talk about instrument setups for each of our instrumentalists we've got these whirlwind imp2 direct boxes. Highly recommend these. These are built like a tank. We've taken these places with us and they are definitely scratched up, but they still work. I've actually used these for a really long time. I used to use these. I'm not sure if they're the same exact model, but I used to use this essentially same direct box at the church that I used to go out, which was like 10 years ago. So definitely highly recommend these. We've got one here for this acoustic and then another for myself and then we've got one for the bass player as well. So we use three of them and then we've got a few more lying around in case we need them and we have one for our pad setup as well which I'll show you over here. There's our pad setup. Let me zoom in and give you some more info on that. Here is our simple, simple, simple pad setup once again an exercise in using what you have i had this ernie ball volume pedal because i play electric from time to time but we took that and we've got this this is like literally some horribly cheap dell tablet that we had lying around so i threw some pad tracks on there and now that is connected on this side through a 3.5 millimeter to quarter inch cable. Plug that into the uh, volume pedal, just like you would a guitar, and now that allows you to bring in pads and bring them out, depending on where you've got the volume set on the pedal. And then, of course, that is run into another Whirlwind Imp2 direct box and that is our pad setup we're just usually the cajon player or the bass player triggers this because they've got a free hand from time to time so they just click whatever pad they want to play whatever key we're in and then swell it in with the volume pad let's talk about monitoring for a second because this is what we use and yes this is a floor wedge this is a floor monitor. Like I said, before we bought all this gear, digital had not dropped in price yet and become affordable. So we use what we have and this works. And this is a JBL JRX 100. Pretty good monitor for the price. I've been happy with it. We've got four of these total and we usually only use three. So whenever we lead on Sunday, we've got one here in the middle. I'm usually standing right there. So that's kind of my monitor, the cajon player can hear it. And then we've got one over here for the bass player. And there's also a singer here who kind of benefits from both of these. And then our other 
leader right here uses that monitor and the Cajon player gets some benefit from that too. So three monitors to cover five people on a stage. Our stage isn't super big, but we also keep the monitor levels pretty low because we're in a smaller space. So that's worked for us. Even though we don't have in-ears, we still make it work. These power amplifiers run our monitors. So these are the same exact kind that we use to run our mains. This is a GX5 up here. This is a GX3 QSC power amplifier. The only difference is one has slightly more power than the other one, but I don't think we use the full capability of the power. So they essentially work the same. And once again, I would not recommend these. Next time we need to replace these, I will not be buying the same thing because these switches and I probably just messed it up, go bad. So right now, we've just been keeping it. There you go. I just keep it on this uh, power conditioner. And like I said, you can see, now I'm gonna have to mess around. Oh my gosh. Yeah, we need to replace that. But small church, that's what we got to work with. So that's what we use. I know it's not an excuse, but I'm just trying to show you like the reality of being in a small church. If you lead in a small church, you know that this stuff happens too. So I'm not gonna pretend like everything is perfect and it all works 100% of the time. On to the next thing. For those of you interested, I had this sitting here. So this is my Taylor 214 CE guitar. Had this thing since high school. Bought it for myself whenever I graduated from high school. I've told that story before. My favorite guitar, I've got some other ones. I can't get away from this one, Taylor 214 CE. When I do play electric, which does not happen very often, this is an Epiphone Les Paul Custom. I don't know, I've had this for a while too. I think it's like, I'm not sure what all the uh, additions are or all the models, but that was like 600 bucks whenever I got it. I think it's like the studio model or something. So those are my guitars, if you were wondering. One last thing to show you as far as audio goes, I'm, I think, I'm pretty sure that's it. This mess of cables is our stage snake. This is the Stage Master. Let's see if I can get it. Stage Master Pro Co. It's got 24 inputs for our uh, mixer back there, and then four outputs essentially or returns or whatever they're called and we use those to run our monitors now that thick cable runs i think it's like 150 feet long maybe it runs along this center beam all the way back to our sound booth finally i guess let's wrap up with lighting i showed you what controller we were using back there that once again, along with the snake is run, there's a DMX cable run along the center channel and then it runs to these trusses. I'll have to look up what these are. These are like just park hands. They were really super cheap. And then we've got like a Chave dimmer pack up there. So that controls those lights. We've got two more over there and then the DMX cable runs from the dimmer pack in those trusses down this back wall and gets distributed to these lights, which are just like accent lights. We've got them shining up on some pallets. These are the Chave Slimpar 56s. So we've got eight of those. We actually had, well, we had nine, I guess. There were eight along this wall, so we had three there three there and then two here but one of them just died a couple weeks ago so maybe we'll upgrade that or replace it at least at a future date but right now we just have eight there's one more up there so we just keep it simple keep basically white lights because they aren't the brightest light in the world especially with all of this front lighting that we put on the stage so i find that white just shows up the best if you can do colors but colors don't show up as bright as just pure white or whatever we have them set at now so that's what we keep them at that's our lighting I thought that was it, but I forgot to tell you what our main speakers are. These are once again, something that we brought over from the old building. We were in a much smaller space, but we weren't really utilizing these to their full volume potential. So we brought them in here, tried to see how they worked and 
they worked for us. They aren't the most amazing, but we're using what we have. These are the Yamaha A15s. They fill this room nicely. We've kind of got a unique room because it's just a warehouse. We converted a warehouse, concrete floors, cinder block walls, things bounce around in here, but it kind of gives it like this really lively sound that I think we've at least grown accustomed to and it sounds pretty decent. So we like them. These aren't too loud, but we aren't running super hot on Sundays either. We try to keep the volume at a comfortable level and we're just playing acoustic instruments, two acoustics, a bass and a drummer and a couple singers as well. So we don't really need anything crazy. I guess I did tell you that I was gonna show you how we were planning on upgrading the sound room here and kind of fixing it. Cause right now it's in a box. And if you didn't notice, we've got like air conditioning units in there. It is not convenient. You can probably hear it right now. It's probably really annoying. That's what our sound man hears. Not good. So in the very near future, we're going to update it and push it out past this and probably close this window off. This will just turn into a closet. We're going to build a little platform here, move all of our gear out onto there, and then we'll be out of this noisy room of death and have a clear view of the stage, not be surrounded by walls. We'll be able to mix much better. Those are our plans. So that's my church's tech set up. I'm hoping that this kind of starts a series on gear because I want to talk about gear. If you know me, I don't really talk about gear and I'm going to be covering in at least one more video, maybe two more videos. We'll see what I decide on. I'm going to be covering sort of my philosophy on gear because as you can see, my gear is not impressive. It's not anything amazing. Uh, I think I did the math and in total, that gear setup, everything that I just showed you, everything you just saw cost maybe around $7,500, which sounds like a lot, but remember that that was purchased over the course of eight years, maybe. So over eight years, it's really not that expensive. It's not like we went out and dropped money and bought all of this stuff at one time. We bought each piece slowly over time. And so I'm hoping that this starts this discussion on gear that you can still do ministry without the best gear in the world you can use what you have and i'm going to be sharing a little bit more of my philosophy on that next week so my name is spencer cormany from leadingworshipwell.com your daily dose of practical worship leading tips thanks so much for following along with me today and i'll see you in the next one see you guys